Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be your troubled past doesn't have to equal your future. So I've got an email success story, and this particular guy has been following me for about 10 months. He's from the land down under, and he comes, as he puts it, from a dysfunctional family. He said when they were real young, I think he was four or five, I think he said, his parents became homeless, and then they end up him and his siblings got split up and, in, in essence, given to a bunch of different relatives. All of his siblings have had problems with drug and alcohol, and it's just kind of been a train wreck. And so when you look at this guy's life on paper, you can say, wow, he's got everything stacked against him. It wouldn't be surprising if he just turned out to be a total loser and never amounted to to anything. Well, about 10 months ago, he had a bad breakup and obviously that led him to my work, 3% Man, the first book. And so he's been studying the things that I teach and he's completely turned his life around. And it's a cool success story and it just illustrates it. I mean, I have guys in their 70s that I work with that for whatever reason, maybe their spouse passed away or they got a divorce. And these guys are out there grinding, still trying to make their lives the way they want them to be, taking care of their body, trying to live as long and as full of a life as possible. Because the reality is, is I've shared this in other videos in the past. I had a, a doctor friend who was a cardiologist. And for whatever reason, it's like when people come to him, usually they've had strokes or heart attacks. And 55 seems to be the cutoff for most people. He says people that are 55 and under, 75% of them will change their diet, they'll do the exercise, but it's like when people are 55 and up and they come to them, 75% of them are like, I don't care, just give me the pill, doc. <laughs> they've just, they literally got one foot in the grave and they've given up, it's sad. And a lot of people, unfortunately, give up a lot sooner than 55, but the average person seems to be about where their spirit's just completely broken, their dreams are dead, they've given up on themselves, and they're just trying to be comfortable until they tap out at the end of their lives. And I've had several friends that just never could get their act together and have since passed away just because they were troubled and they didn't take care of themselves. And if you don't take care of your body and you treat it like you have no will to live, your body will match and mirror that. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So shall he become. So with that said, I got a quote that I wrote and we'll go through his email because I know there's somebody out there that is going to hear this and it's going to inspire them. If this guy can do it, they can do it. So the quote says, it's never too late to become the person you were meant to be. As long as you have breath in your lungs, love in your heart, and light in your eyes, you can spend your days creating the life and lifestyle you've always dreamed of. No matter what has gone wrong in your past, it doesn't have to define your future as long as you choose to shape and change your destiny with your daily actions. Having an emotionally compelling vision that stirs hope in your heart and determination in your mind is the fuel and emotional leverage that you will need to continually propel yourself forward even when success seems hopeless or far off into the future. It's easy to be lazy and give up in your dreams like most average people have done, but truly bright spirits who believe in the beauty of their dreams and make them happen can inspire millions to follow in their footsteps. I mean, after all, the word lead means to go first. It's basically what it boils down to. Your determination to make your life better will be inspiration for all the people who are around you that watch this because we all need good examples. We all need people to look up to. When we're having those down days and things aren't going well, having somebody that just smiles, lets the bad things, the calamities roll off their backs like water rolls off the back of a duck. People like that inspire us to keep moving forward. They can do it. I can do it. Your success gives me hope for mine. So he says, Hi, Corey. I know you're fucking awesome, so I'll cut to the chase. A very brief backstory of myself. 
I'm a 25-year-old Australian male who comes from a dysfunctional family. Both parents are disabled and don't work. We became homeless when I was in fifth grade, so my siblings and I were split up and sent to other relatives. My older brother had a bad heroin addiction and took off early in life. Both my sisters have extreme depression. My eldest tied a belt around her neck in seventh grade and my mother found her completely unconscious in her room. My youngest sister overdosed on heroin at 20 and has very slight brain damage from lack of oxygen and after splitting with her abusive boyfriend last year, tried to cut her throat and has ended up with life scarring. They're now mature and living their life separately from one another. And my eldest sister has three children with different fathers and my elder brother has recently become married. Kids are basically going to emulate what they see in their parents. He didn't invite, this is his brother, he didn't invite any of the family to his wedding. I've always been mature and very self-reliant, so in ninth grade I left school and got my first job sweeping hair in a barber shop. What introduced me to your work 10 months ago was when I ruined a three-month dating relationship with a great woman. She was 20, petite, size 5, blonde, big blue eyes, wealthy, happy family, and studying while working in the law firm her father is a partner in. Basically what every movie would depict the perfect family to be. So you can see right away if he's used to dysfunctional and he dates a woman who's normal, it doesn't feel right to be with somebody who's normal. And therefore, the likelihood that he's going to self-sabotage is very likely. And obviously, that's what happened. I was dating other women at the time, as I've always been great with one-night stands because I never needed to rely on the emotional side of things. Like they always do, she eventually found out. We had traveled a bit together, and we were very sexually compatible. I had opened her up to a lot sexually. She brought out the best of me, and I'm glad to say she always won gold at the Indoor Olympics. Everything I've shared is all very personal and private to me. I was always taught emotions are weak, however, and I wanted to explain to you why and how your influence has helped me. In turn, she was the only person in my life I ever had feelings for, including my family, and without her, I wouldn't have discovered your help. So in other words, he basically ran right into the wall of life. And the way he was living life obviously was not very efficient and it wasn't a good way to go about it. He came across a good woman, comes from a good family, has good values, and he screwed around on her and he fucked it up. But he didn't know any better. But it's like things like this happen. It's like people don't change their belief system until it no longer works for them. And so he had an emotionally compelling reason to make changes. He really loved this girl and appreciated her. But he fucked it up. So that pain becomes the fuel for a lot of change in his life, which you'll see in a second. Because we share the same interests, political views, humor, etc., it is the reason I stayed to learn more about myself long after my interest for the mentioned woman had diminished. I own your book, 3% Man, paper book and audio, as well as your recommended ones, how to gain, win friends and influence people, and the way of the superior man. I love them all. I'm currently on my fifth read of 3% Man and looking forward to where I'll be in my life at the 15th or 25th read. Well, I also recommend that you read Mastering Yourself because this book is an autobiography of all my, my life, everything I've been through in my life, all the things I overcome, the mindset, the way I eat, which obviously if you guys have been watching the 30 day challenge videos I've done with Chunky and Gracie, you can see how hard it is for them to stay committed to juicing and smoothies and eating healthy nuts and exercising and doing all the things that 
they admit really worked, really made them feel better and look better, but still it's hard for them, like most people, to stick with it. It takes a lot of discipline and a lot of internal fortitude and determination. Like I mentioned, I first discovered you through the grieving anger of losing someone. A wise man once said, rejection breeds obsession. Well, again, I look at people like this. They come along in your life and you recognize that you screwed up. You experience pain. People do more to avoid pain than they do to gain pleasure. And if somebody had come to him and said, hey, I got this great book that will help you be more successful with women, have better quality relationships, he would have been completely uninterested in it. But obviously after things go sideways, he's like, what's the name of that book? Now he's got an emotionally compelling reason to make changes, to learn, to read, to grow, to improve. Because at the time, he's hoping to get this girl back. And this is what it takes. Some people, it's going through bankruptcy, losing their business. Somebody ups and leaves them. They lose all their money in the stock market. They have a debilitating illness that happens out of the blue. Life brings you all kinds of calamities. And at these bad times typically cause you to really pause and really reflect, which quite frankly, over the last year and a half, all these crazy lockdowns, a lot of people have completely changed and uprooted their lives because they had a lot of time to think and really examine where they were and whether or not they were happy with the way they were living their lives. He says, however, I have stayed for the courage and confidence you've enlightened in me through the years of very poor role models and life choices. I always knew I had all the pieces, though no one had helped or taught me to assemble them until I hit my teen years and, of course, started following your work on self-help. Skip to today, and I've recently arranged to move to the inner city where I am studying my bachelor in psychology so I can help others and especially young teenagers. I've also stopped wasting my valuable time and I'm completely sober of any alcohol or drugs. Good job, dude. I have recently developed multiple incomes and I'm saving for a deposit on my first house. I'll be the first person in my entire family to own my own home. Remember what I was saying earlier? The word lead means to go first. Hopefully you'll be an inspiration for the rest of your siblings. If he can do it, I can do it. As well as that, I stopped having one night stands and I'm patiently waiting for my ideal little pussycat that matches my list perfectly to stroll up to me one day purring. I've attached a picture of me and one of my current casual dates. She's very beautiful and he's a handsome guy. You got to give him that. And what's interesting is when people send me their pictures or their wives or their girlfriends or significant other. I've said this many times over the years in videos is that we tend to be attracted to people who have the same facial structure as us. And when you look at their eyes and especially their nose, it's, I mean, it's pretty identical. It's pretty neat. We are both looking for a partner, but when time affords us the luxury, the two of us hang out, have fun and hook up. She's a great woman and any guy will be lucky to have her. You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. When you give a woman total freedom to stay with you or that you dare her to find somebody better, they might pretty much almost always choose you because most guys don't have the ability to do that. It's counterintuitive, especially when you think about all the movies and TV programs that you gotta lock her down, gotta put a ring on that finger got to catch her before somebody else does she'll be back it's funny that sometimes through one small failure we try to avoid inevitably shows us a hidden path which then creates greater circumstances for which we live the rest of our lives by well pain is life's way of showing us that what we're doing or how we're living or how we're thinking is not working and it's wrong and it's that pain that we want to avoid that moves us towards things that feel good or potentially will feel good. So you're more than welcome to use my story for any videos you wish to make as I believe anyone out there can relate to feeling alone mentally in a world full of weak role models. 
especially in the last year, our supposed leaders who have just revealed their inner totalitarian and their solution to everything is locking people down and telling people what to do. And if you don't do it, they send the police to beat the crap out of you. I mean, it's just insane what I see in some of these other countries. People, you got the police are basically the mask police now and fining people thousands. Oh, you didn't have a mask on. There's $5,000 fine for you. It's like, what the fuck, man? Anyways, I don't want to get on that tangent. But if you've got a question or a challenge or something you'd like to get my help with, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 